There are those who have the ability to recognize unchanged scenes, who can easily step into the picture of today and listen to the past. To those favored few, covered bridges are always irresistible. Like old water mills, they seem to echo clear the mood and sounds of the past, where in the shadowed recesses of a stream and along the banks of winding dirt roads, American life first developed. In viewing the previous and present existence of the Spencerville Covered Bridge, we must start when homesteaders entered this part of the country. Settlers arriving down the Maumee River and crossing the Black Swamp in Ohio, and then coming up the St. Joe River looking for land to buy and settle. In 1828, Spencerville was first known as the first river settlement on the big bend of the St. Joe River. Its first permanent settler came up the river from Fort Wayne, selected his land, and filed his claim at the U.S. Land Office in Fort Wayne. And the town grew from that small beginning. As the influx of settlers increased, it became a problem for the landowners on the east side of the river to get to town for supplies. Perhaps they walked across on stepping stones. In some areas, the river could be forded during part of the year, but this means of crossing was undependable sometimes dangerous and frequently impossible. Simple bridges were sometimes built near the fording site. Travelers by wagon often ignored small bridges entirely during summer, but drove off the road and crossed at the nearby fording places so their horses could get a drink at the same time. On May 1, 1837, DeKalb County was formed as a separate county by an act of the Indiana legislature. The first courthouse was built in 1843. Among the first services demanded by the residents of the new county were roads and bridges. Bridges across larger streams of rivers were not so simple. These streams carried large volumes of water during the spring, during which it was not uncommon for them to be eight or ten times normal their sizes. Bridges were frequently washed out. It should be noted that the present course of the river north of the bridge had been significantly changed around 1950. The river as it exists now looks like this in a satellite photo. Harold Kraft, a local gravel company owner, dredged out a large portion of the river and sold the gravel in the area. Thus some of the coming information may not make sense unless this change in the river is noted. The first recorded bridge was built and it stood north of the present bridge some 500 feet. The bridge floor was of logs hewed flat on one side to better lay on the cross logs. They were said to flop over if driven across with too much speed. The 1863 map of DeKalb County indicates a bridge at the site of the present 1873 constructed covered bridge. It's not known what happened to this bridge. Access to the grist and sawmills was so important to the pioneer that the prompt replacement of the bridge was very essential. Therefore, the county contracted the present bridge. It was built during the winter of 1873 by John A. McKay and the Smith Bridge Company at a cost of $4,458. It is 146 feet long. The method of construction is conducive to be strong and have a long life. This is called the Smith Truss and was used for the construction of the Spencerville Bridge as well as many other covered bridges that were built in the county. The beams on the sides and top of the covered bridge are a part of the structural scheme. They are essential for the strength of the bridge. The addition of a vertical siding and a roof protected the wooden components from the weather. They also serve to make the bridge more rigid. Covered bridges always have an open area, usually under the eaves. This enables the air to circulate around the timbers, which helps to keep them dry. It also provides light for an otherwise very dark corridor. This picture is the oldest one available of the present covered bridge. It was taken circa 1884 and it is shown at the very end of the newly constructed road grade. You will notice that there are no trees or shrubs along the road grade. More information about this picture will be shared later. The grade was necessary to get the floor of the bridge above any major flood level. A covered bridge will last indefinitely if properly cared for. Michigan white pine is extremely weather and insect resistant. Smith bridges were usually made of Michigan white pine. They were frequently pre-cut, 
framed or assembled loosely, disassembled, and then shipped to the site for assembly and locating over the river. The system of trusses and steel rods makes the bridge extremely durable. The roof and sides keep the timbers dry. The windows at the top permit the circulation of air around the timbers. In 1923, trustee W.O. Lake was alerted about the many accidents between the automobiles and buggies at the road coming up from the south towards the east end of the bridge. Because of the danger, he had a long window constructed on the south side of the bridge. For scenic purposes, he also had one put on the north side, but it was not to be as long. It also did not have any small awning over the opening as it does now. Many visitors have looked through this window area to admire the scenic view. In 1957, vandals tried to burn down the bridge. The fire was quickly extinguished by the fire department, but the blaze had burned a hole about two feet in length through both the top and subflooring. Standing under the bridge, one can detect no give when a car or truck crosses. Only a slight ripple of the floorboards can be seen and heard. The exterior siding must be painted periodically, and the roof must be maintained if the bridge is to last. In 1970, a new roof of cedar shingles was put on. Engineering estimates determined that asphalt or steel roofing would put too much weight on the roof and could collapse it. The DeKalb County Commissioners committed themselves to permanently preserving the county's last covered bridge. In 1991, another cedar shingle roof was installed at a cost of $24,000. $450. The bridge was completely restored in 1983 at a cost of $174,000. The project included repairs to the center pier and east end wall. Much hand labor had to be done to retain the character of the bridge. Carpenters also rebuilt the bridge floor, making it safe for fire trucks, school buses, and lighter trucks. Before those repairs, the bridge was restricted to passenger cars. Some area residents proposed replacing it with a modern span. County commissioners instead chose to strengthen the wood structure. After a few collisions by trucks and combines trying to go through the bridge, and with pressure from the county commissioners and local residents, a proposal was put forth to construct a bypass around the bridge, with 80% of the cost coming from federal funds and 20% from the county, plans were made to construct a new cement bridge and to also strengthen and remodel the existing bridge, which could still be used by passenger cars only. After more than a year of construction, the covered bridge and the new road bridge were completed. A historic was held October 7, 2007. The bridge was dedicated, the ribbon cut, and finally traffic could use it. Other road improvements were also done at the same time. The bridge has been threatened by flood on several occasions. In 1884, water and ice were leveled with the floor. The force of the water washed and weakened the long grade at the west end of the bridge. The grade was saved by the efforts of the citizens in boats, stuffing straw into the crack and crevices of the grade. There were also many other threatening floods, but the bridge always held. There were flood conditions in 1898, 1910, 1913, 1937, 1982, and 2009 but the bridge always held fast. In 2009, it was quite obvious that the new road aided in helping with the flood conditions. Not only was the bridge a means of transportation for our ancestors, but it was used for another type of communication also. Handbills and posters were placed on the white board area on the inside of the ends as evidenced by hundreds of nails and nail holes. Those boards have since been replaced during an upgrade of the bridge. The interior of the bridge was also used extensively for advertising purposes. Along the side panels were painted ads by the local merchants. Some older residents remembered ads as listed here. It suggested that many of these were painted by Fred High, a sign painter who lived near the bridge. Buy your dry goods and groceries at Bishop. They sell cheaper than any other house. Oliver Chilled Plows, J.B. Beams, Crockery Dishes, Linoleum. Go to Eric and Barney for dry goods. Lovers frequently tarried in the darkness of the covered bridge. Numerous initials carved on the beams and guardrails suggest that the bridges were a popular place 
to while away a lazy summer afternoon. The laboriously carved initials on the spensable covered bridge contrast sharply with words hastily applied with a can of spray paint, a vivid commentary to the difference of the worlds in which our ancestors and we live. At some point in the 1970s, local high school students painted over the graffiti and kept a careful watch for anyone that might want to spray away. It became their bridge to care for. The bridge has been painted by many artists. A professor at IPFW comes out in the summer to paint and relax at the bridge. In 2006, some ladies stopped at the local St. Joe Lyons home and wondered where the covered bridge was located. <laughs> They'd passed it on the new road, but because of the trash trees growing between the old road and the new road, it was not visible when the trees were in leaf. Thus, the Lyons became involved in, in taking on the responsibilities of cleaning up that area. East Side students, as well as scouts and other community members, have helped clean up more of the trash. Pride and much effort is needed to keep the bridge area in some type of acceptable viewing for the many travelers that come to view and admire our special bridge. In 2010, the local Lions Club erected a pavilion that could be used by travelers and locals to meet and enjoy the peaceful surroundings. Volcraft Steel donated the framework and the workers to erect the pavilion, and the concrete and labor to form and finish it was also donated. Some mysterious and unknown local carpenter constructed and placed two heavy picnic tables under the roof. During the summer, many people are seen taking advantage of this scenic rest stop. In 1973, the town of Spencerville celebrated the centennial of its bridge. A committee for planning and preparation was appointed. The chairman of the event was Robert Wilder, here shown as leading the parade of the day. Most of the men in the town grew beards for this day. The town and the surrounding community came out in great numbers to celebrate this centennial celebration. The parade of days gone by featured many older relics, and past activities. There were many floats with different themes. The dress of the participants matched much of what were styles of the day. A slideshow of the history of the bridge was attended by many of the festival attenders. Several more festivals were held with activities centered around the covered bridge. In 1981, the Spencerville Covered Bridge was recorded as a National Historic Place in DeKalb County. The bridge has been the setting for the Supper on the Bridge event, and the proceeds are used to fund activities for the festival community. The local catering service prepares and serves the meals. There have been many weddings held on the bridge. It makes for a very rustic and pastoral background. Many of the local citizens come together for good conversation and friendship. A young man that lived near the bridge in his youth regularly comes back as an adult to rest and revitalize himself in the peaceful atmosphere that surrounds the bridge. The area churches came together one hot summer Sunday and met on the bridge for a unified service and fellowship. It was considered a high point for the worshipers to go back in time and fellowship as a community of friends and believers. In 2012, a careless and impaired semi-truck driver drove through the covered bridge and caused a great amount of damage to the structure. The driver told officers he received directions to use the bypass bridge by his GPS unit, which guided him across the covered bridge. The semi demolished several six-by-six cross beams and roof trusses and destroyed the bridge's east approach sign and facade. Due to the commitment of the county commissioners and the insurance settlement, it was quickly decided to repair the bridge. A bridge repair construction firm was hired to repair it, and after a long period of time, it was finally completed. After a final inspection, the covered bridge was finally opened for sightseeing and local traffic. In order to ensure that this tragedy would not reoccur, special steel I-beams covered with rough sawn planks were installed to indicate the maximum height permitted on the ridge. Why are the covered bridges covered? Many scenic travelers always ask that same question. There are several very good reasons. Much folklore has developed about covered bridges. It has been said that a covered bridge 
was made to look like a barn so that horses and other animals would freely enter. Otherwise, the animals would be reluctant to cross water. Covered bridges, incidentally, provided shelter for those caught on the road in the storm. One would certainly been welcome shelter to a traveler in an open buggy. Water seeping into the joints of the structural components would freeze and thaw, thereby loosening the joints. Moisture in the joints would eventually cause the timbers to rot and weaken. Conversely, shelter prevents the timbers from becoming too dry during dry weather and loosening and sagging. On the other hand, the dark shadows of a covered bridge provided an ideal place for a thief to rob a traveler. A lifetime of over 140 years is beyond the reach of humans. It's even a long time for a structure to survive, especially a structure still doing exactly what it was designed to do even before lifestyles have greatly changed within its century plus. An example of pioneer ingenuity and craftsmanship, the covered bridge stands as a nostalgic reminder of our past. It was probably just another bridge to its builders in 1873, but it's a bridge to the past for us. It has seen a lot of years. It has seen a lot of traffic. It must see more. We must preserve and protect it. We owe it to our descendants. <laughs>